<laughs> that was kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> Bing's Built, protected by Amsoil, with support from Roadster Shop and Nitto. Got a gift package from Whipple. John Espino made a run to Fresno uh -huh. yesterday. Just hot lap up yep. to Fresno. Picked this up from the Whipples, and uh, I'm dying to see this. Me too. Before we get into it, though, I wanted to talk about a more traditional setup. Basically, what we have right here is a 3.8 Whipple. Absolutely. What's in the box is a 3.8 Whipple. So, so what's different about this one than this one? This one is, I guess, a more conventional setup. Uh, Certainly more conventional for has what? a front drive, yeah. uh, pulley down to the crankshaft, tensioner, idler, all the jive goes here. And the air goes in the rear. So if you, if you look at the rear, you can see the impellers, and it would turn clockwise as, as seen from the front of the crankshaft. So the air would come somewhere from the nose of the car and flow in a duct or casting that might have throttle and a lot of other yeah. things going, air filtration, et cetera, and swing around into the back. We couldn't do this. We originally thought we were, we thought we were going to use that, but when we kind of laid everything out and looked at what really made sense for us, that wasn't it. Firewall, firewall, firewall. As it is, we pushed back into the firewall uh, to do it the other way around. So the idea was to drive it from the induction end. And you see a lot of this, this is nothing new, but I wanted to do a dual inlet and dual air filters. And that <laughs> turned into something incredibly cosmic, I'll tell you that. So you guys all get the idea of what's going on here. Uh, we'll take this one. Let's put this one uh, out of the foreground. This is the, um, this is the moment. This is it. Yeah. This is so what we've been waiting cut, for. Cut that side and halfway through here and... Now... I don't know if you hit it or not there. It's, it's like, where the hell is the middle of all yeah. this? Ooh, I think there's staples in there. Kind of hard on the... Yeah. Watch your fingers. Well, that's kind of hard on the blade. That's kind of hard on the yeah. knife blade right there. Uh, okay. Oh, oh man. This oh. is like... This is, this is months of, of waiting for this moment right here. <laughs> I, I'm in the seam here. Uh, call the fire department. We're going to have, have to cut him out of here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Search and rescue. I'm not giving up. I'm getting this thing out. I thought this was going to be, we're just going to pull it out This of is the a box. fun way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this thing is packaged to go to the freaking moon. This must be uh, accessory pieces. Uh, you know what I think that is, Gail? Drive pieces, probably. I think that is our crank pulley. Ah! We, Should we open that first? Yes. All right. Um, uh, it's staple time. Yeah. All right. 
You don't think that's drive or something like that, huh? We're going to see. We are going to see. Yeah. <laughs> so, guys, you have to get ready for this. What have, what have we got? Just Let's start with the littlest one first. Sure. All right. Kind of like Christmas. Okay, so that is an idler, a, an idler pulley. Yep. Yeah. And some, some lube. Yep. So when we were styling this, I walked into the drafting room. And Matt has this Raider Mag wheel, you know, uh, and I kind of went, "Hey, that's a Raider Mag wheel." <laughs> Kind of old timey. Got to draw your your inspiration from. from uh, it, it's from yeah. the era uh, of the truck. So there you have it. Oh lord! This is our lower pulley. Oh look, it's got a bank emblem. <laughs> it's kind of subtle, but it's there, right there. So we have a six-spoke mag, <laughs> 60s vintage. That is also is the pulley for the crankshaft. Six spokes, 12 ribs. Yeah. And it bolts right into. Yeah, it's going to key. Uh, our, our damper. It's going to key into our bank's damper and bolt, yeah. bolt on. Yeah. So. We have a six bolt drive uh, for, for uh, lots of auxiliary uses. Mm -hmm. The six bolt drive off the front of the damper assembly gives you another belt plane. You know, like if you want to run an accessory water pump for a charge air cooler system that needs big water flow and some head pressure as well. That's best done in a non-electric manner. That's how we've done it at Bonneville where we were running like 120 gallons a minute through our charge air coolers on the uh, Firebird. I'm, I'm itching here, Gail, to get this, get this oh, supercharger. Oh, I'm just uh, <laughs> yeah, being real casual about this. <laughs> You know, we're, we're doing this midday on a Saturday. And Matt told me last night, if you don't get here by noon tomorrow, tomorrow to unbox this thing, he was going to do it, you know, all by himself. Well, should we, should we flip it over? You think that's it? <laughs> ah! We were the right way. <laughs> oh, mother. <laughs> oh, mother. Let's tilt it up this way. Okay. Here, I can get a hand on it. I got it. Why don't you rep that a few times? <laughs> yeah. Give me 10 reps. Ooh, ah. Gentlemen, All right. thank you. Here it is, the moment we have been waiting oh, for. Oh, baby. So, <laughs> you know, this is best viewed that way. So as this was being worked on, we had this CAD and it established this really sexy rib job. Why not take this into the front? And I don't know, we went back and forth. We are mutually agreed. You got this going on, put it into the intake casting. So here's the front, front of the blower, which would be the rear of the blower if this was a normal setup. Uh, a more traditional setup. But here we've got the drive. Another thing happens here that I really like. If the drive is at the front, the outlet is at the front of the engine. So if you center this thing up on the engine, and this is the same with all screw blowers, they induct basically from one end and they discharge from the bottom on the other end. Yeah, you get an axial compression yes. through the rotors. So there's a compression ratio within the rotors and then you can build over uh, feed the engine the engine so you build a boost number within the intake manifold. What I like about this is the discharge if you want to hold that yep. we'll compare the discharge. Oh. <laughs> Even under here, look at that. Oh, oh my well, God. You got to. Yeah. You know, once you start that stuff going on, it's. Oh, my. Yeah. So here's the discharge. Now we've got it, we've got a setup where we're able to kind of center that on the engine, on the intake manifold. When it's here and you're driving from the front, it's harder to do, so to speak. 
this just worked out beautifully for us because it gave us room behind the blower as well. It, it really did. And you and I went back and forth yeah. for quite a while on, on the packaging of where this would end up, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in reference to the, the drive plane, right? And so this was the, the geometry that we landed on was to push the blower forward on the manifold. Yes. And we, we get a good length here. I feel here. like Chevy Chase. Yeah. <laughs> the Marx Brothers, something with that old sticky thing gag. Okay, so. <laughs> We've got a whole, uh, a whole lot of things going on here. This is the idler. You've got some humps and bumps in here. Uh, we kind of finessed them as best we could. But the air velocity through this is a lot lower than if you only had one side. So it allowed us to, to get some symmetry to it. And I'm, I'm nuts for symmetry. There you can see down in and you can see the rotors turning, oh, I hope. Yep. You want to go Ooh. in the other side with that? So, yes, there's stuff inside. Why don't you pull back a little and I'll point. Uh, this is clearance for the idler. But there's so much cross-section <laughs> that we really don't have a restriction with a bump in it that would cause it to be really, really... Yeah, to, to, to demonstrate horrible that point. Horrible, aerodynamically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do it again? Yeah. Yeah, get, get, I'll turn the rotors yeah. while your yeah. hand's in there. So there you've got it from the bottom. And there's the, oops, turning the rotors the right direction. Here we go. So that's discharge rotation. There's a traditional, it's just one of the neatest pieces of work See our, uh, had to do with. Our data acquisition points under here, Gail? Might as well point that out. Uh -huh. So pressure and temperature here, uh, right in the induction. So we can look at ambient pressure and temp temperature, pressure and temperature here, and that'll give us an idea of what happened with the intake air. Hopefully we get some ram air off those headlights we removed. And of course, just the overall look at. So drink it up now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, out. yeah. Back yeah. of the blower looks like a traditional back end on the blower. Here's the sight gauge for the uh, lubricant. But if that isn't the coolest looking supercharger I've ever seen, I don't know what the hell is. That is pure hot rod sex, <laughs> absolutely. And wait. Yeah, and the more you look at it, the more you'll understand what I'm talking about here. Just wait until that's on our billet manifold, oh too. Oh, my God. The billet manifold, the whole thing. <laughs> and we were going to paint uh, this a kind of a magnesium color. We started getting a lot of stuff down from Whipple as he was machining the case. And I went, you know what? That is, is such a beautiful billet machining job. There's no way on earth I'm painting it unless we clear coat it with a gloss clear finish. Otherwise, there'll be a lot of mothers involved polishing this stuff. Collaboration, that's what this place is all about. It may have my name on it, but <laughs> there's an army of guys here that are creative in the extreme. This is one of them, Matt Gamble. <laughs>